By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Hank and he is playing with a Land Equilibrium deck. And I'm taking him on with a mono green budget build. It's kind of green stompy, but there are some other cards in there. Before we're going to the match itself, I first want to do a short deck deck on both the decks. Uh, if you'd like to go straight to the games, of course, you can do so by checking out the description below and by clicking on the timestamp and it'll take you directly to game number one. For now, let's take a look at both of these decks. My opponent Hank is playing with the Land Equilibrium deck and this is a Prison Control deck. And here you can see four of the key cards. So let's start with the card on the left, Land Equilibrium. It's two blue and two, an enchantment from Legends, and it reads, if your opponent controls at least as much lands as you do, he or she must sacrifice a land for each land he or she puts into play. So that means that as soon as you have a certain amount of lands and land equilibrium is in play, so let's say you both have four lands in play, that means that when your opponent plays out land number five, he or she must first sacrifice a land. So this is very important, so you can't even play out that land. And um, that really ties well, fits well together with the card right next to it, Mana Vortex. And Mana Vortex is an enchantment from the dark. Two blue and one, and it reads, each player who controls land sacrifices one land during his or her upkeep. If at any time there are no lands in play, Mana Vortex is destroyed. If you do not sacrifice a land when Mana Vortex is cast, Mana Vortex is countered. So in other words, the Mana Vortex makes sure that there are no lands in play anymore. And with the land equilibrium in play, it means that no player can play out any lands anymore so you're basically stuck now obviously when you have this tactic huh, because the tactic is making sure that your opponent in this case me because i'm going to play him uh, has no lands in play all the lands are destroyed so you're kind of stuck with a full uh, grip of cards and you cannot do anything and obviously when you have this tactic of just destroying all the lands with his lock then you yourself are playing with a lot of mana rocks and that's why I've uh, put here a picture of Mox Sapphire, um, because this deck has all the Mox and this deck has the Black Lotus, this deck has the Soul Ring, um, this deck also has Mana Vaults, so uh, Felwar Stones as well, I believe. So this deck has a lot of Mana Rocks, alternative ways to get mana. Um, Hank doesn't need the land that he plays. I mean, it's fine that he has them to cast the Equilibrium and the Vortex, maybe a little bit quicker together with the Mana Rocks. Uh, but he doesn't need it long term and of course I do and then once he has the lock set so I have no lands I cannot play out anything there are the black vices so there's a full play set of black vices in the deck to then kill your opponent so that's kind of the way how he eventually wants to kill you but the road towards killing me is, uh, <laughs> is is much more interesting with the land equilibrium and mana vortex lock so maybe it, it sounds a little bit vague now still um, but when you see it in action, and you're probably going to see it in, in one of these games, um, you, you'll really see how it works and how the two cards really complement each other. Now, I do think that he's going to have a tough time playing against my green deck because my green deck is quick. I also play with... Uh, I also have some tricks. Of, of course, I play with two Tranquility's main board. So he's going to have a tough time, I believe, uh, playing against my deck even though it is a budget build. So let's quickly have a look at uh, at my deck and I can explain why that is. This is the deck that I am playing with today. It's a mono green deck and as you can see it's a reprint deck so they're full of uh, other sets mainly for edition. There's also some chronicles in there. There's even some uh, foreign uh, wide border cards in there. You see Forza della Natura if you look closely and that's a force of nature from Italy. There are also two Zauberbuche. Those are tomes from Germany and uh, a few other foreign cards. I always kind of like to mix it up. You also see interesting versions there of Pendlehaven. Um, but it's all the same art and the same frame so that's that's fine for me. And as you can see, the tactics of this deck are pretty obvious. I'm playing with a lot of small creatures. So I just want to... Um, it's basically green stompy, but then I've added uh, some big creatures in there. Four Urnum Jins and one Force of Nature. And the idea here is I just want to have early aggression going and use my Lanora Elves to kind of ramp my Urnum Jins in. Maybe at turn three, hopefully. Sometimes turn two if I happen to get across uh, the Soul Ring or a double Lanora Elf. Um, and then I can kind of get the Urnum Jins out early 
And if nothing else works, I have the Force of Nature for the end game. I also have some direct damage options in the deck, which I believe are, are quite important because sometimes you cannot just win with combat damage alone. So I have two Storm Seekers in there, kind of punishing players that um, they want to have a lot of card draw. So usually blue players. And, you know, Hank is playing with blue, so I think Stormseeker can be a great weapon in this matchup. I'm also playing with Hurricanes, and I want to use the Hurricanes as uh, direct damage cards to kind of um, kind of use them as a fireball. And the idea is here, because I have a lot of small creatures, I'm probably the, the person that deals the most damage at the start of the game. So if he's not dead yet in mid-game and I'm approaching late game, I can probably use Hurricane because I have more life. So I can take more damage from the Hurricane and I can kill my opponent. The reason that I think it's going to be a difficult matchup for my opponent, I mean, it's, obviously it's also going to be a huge a task for me don't get me wrong i'm not saying i'm just gonna win this one but the reason i think i have a chance here is because i have a lot of small creatures so i i can be very aggressive early game i can deal a lot of damage i believe my opponent is playing creatureless and also i have some finishers in the deck so i've got a storm seeker i've got a hurricane um, but if my opponent manages to kind of get that lock going and and kills my lance pretty early on I at least still have some Lunarer Elves to have some mana available. And I also have the two Tranquility to maybe, you know, play successful Tranquility and get rid of all the um, the land equilibriums and the mana vortex vortexes perhaps um, that are in play. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to pan out. So let's quickly go to game number one and uh, see what's going to happen. Game number one. And on the left, we have Hank with his land equilibrium deck, his control deck. And on the right, I'm playing with my green beatdown deck. And like I said, I think I have a chance here. And look at that, <laughs> look at that, I'm already starting. I should wait here. Sorry, Hank. Um, usually, obviously, you wait till both players have their hands and then you say, do you wanna keep them or not? Um, so let's see if Hank's gonna keep it. I just gave him more information here. I have a great start, by the way, with a Lunar Elves on turn one. And I see Hank drawing a card. And look at that, he's got a Library of Alexandria. This is a big problem for me. Not playing with any Ice Storms. Uh, look at it, playing an Argovian Pixies and a Scavenger Folk turn one, pretty good. What I wanted to say, I'm not playing with any Ice Storms because they are not reprinted. And this is completely a reprint deck. I kind of like to challenge myself. And Hank is here on 20 life. And I'm on 20 life. So I didn't attack yet because I used my Lunar Elf to kind of cast that Scavenger Folk. And with a Scavenger Folk, you want to cast it as fast as possible uh, because it's always very uh, sensitive to removal. Only having one toughness. And of course, you can tap it to destroy an artifact. But when it has summoning sickness, you cannot use that ability. So I want to just get it out quickly. Make sure that it doesn't have summoning sickness anymore. Uh, attacking now for three, keeping my scavenger folk untapped. Maybe I'm going to use it on the mock sapphire, I wonder. I guess I'm not doing it, and look at that. He's taking full advantage of that library of Alexandria, and that's really going to hurt me because he gets so many extra cards here out of that. And he's playing a relic barrier from Legends for two, and you can tap it to tap target artifact. And of course, in a meta like old school where there are so many artifacts, it's very useful especially against those annoying Mishra's factories. Attacking him for three, so he's going to 14. Drawing an extra card again with the Library of Alexandria. So I'm hoping, of course, here to draw a Storm Seeker to kind of punish him for all that extra card draw. And let's see, playing out an Icy Manipulator. And I think I'm probably going to remove this because that's just one of the most annoying cards to play against. And look at that, I'm using my Scavenger Folk. But of course, I'm sure Hank anticipated on this step, so he probably has other powerful artifacts in his hand, like a Howling Mind to draw extra cards for him in combination with that Relic Barrier. Attacking here, going to 12, drawing a card here, untapping, drawing again. Yes, the Storm Seeker. I was hoping I would do that. I've played this game a while ago, so I can't really remember the plays anymore, but this is quite nice. He's taking eight damage, and here you can see how powerful Stormseeker is. It is an instant, and I just love instant spells, and it is it is a way to deal direct damage with green, and there are just not that many options. And that means that Hank is now on three lives, so I'm almost there. Now let's see what he can do. 
counting his cards. He needs to do something. Playing a Howling Mine here, drawing an extra card. And remember that Mishra's Workshop, you can tap it for three mana, but you can only use it to cast artifact spells. Sacking his Black Lotus here, using his Soul Ring to cast a Moat, and that's a huge problem for me. Also playing a Mana Vault here. And I guess we're kind of discussing mana, but I, I believe it's in order. It's always a little bit tricky because you can only use the workshop to cast artifact spells. And let's see what he's going to do next. So he's he's going to stay alive here thanks to the moat, unless of course I can find something here. He cannot counter yet because he only has one blue source. At least I believe he plays with counter spells and mana drains. And he's thinking about using his ore perhaps. But he's allowing me to take my turn. Storms, uh, not a storm seeker. I thought, hey, I'm tapping four again. I'm playing two in the deck main. I'm playing it Zauberbuch, the German version of the Tome. So it's just four and tap. And it looks like Hank wants to remove it. No, he doesn't. Because of that Relic Barrier Howling Mind trick, he draws additional cards and he can probably quickly fill his hand. The question, of course, is if he wants to after seeing that Storm Seeker. On the other hand, he probably thinks that I only play with one Storm Seeker main instead of two. Um, I just find it a really handy card to kind of finish my opponent off when you're playing uh, with an aggressive green build here. Using the Relic Barrier, tapping down the Mishra's Factory, and then he's using his uh, Icy Manipulator again to tap my book, and in that way he's forcing me to choose to activate it before my draw step. So that's exactly what I do. At least I get to draw two cards, and I believe I'm looking here for a Tranquility. I play two main to get rid of the moat, and I'm also looking for a Hurricane to deal that final damage and my other out is, of course, my second Storm Seeker. So I have a few outs in the deck still. And he's only on three life. So I just need a little, little opportunity, a little chance here to finish him off. And look at that. He's playing a Black Vice. So that means his kind of plan can start. But he hasn't found his land equilibrium yet or his mana vortex. Again, tapping my book. So he's kind of forcing me to use it in my upkeep which is quite annoying because you'd rather first draw your card see what you get and then decide if you want to keep or if you want to draw an extra one uh, playing an asp here the card from the arabian knight originally it's a one one but it's not very relevant in in the current board state because of that mode uh, and it's not looking good for me because he's playing a second blue source and that means he can also start to counter my spells now Playing a Felwer Stone. So as you can see, he has tons of artifact mana on the board already. And he doesn't really need the lands. That's kind of what we discussed in a little deck tech prior to this video. Playing a Time Walk now and things are looking very, very dire for me. Oh my goodness. Using his Icy, why not just tap an extra creature? In this case, a Lunower Elf. Just because it's a green mana source, I guess. Again, drawing three cards because of those two Howling Mines and card number four. Look at that. He can already activate his Loa again. And there is Land Equilibrium. It's not super relevant at the moment um, because remember, it only I only have to sacrifice a land when I play a new land and I have six lands in play. I think when, when he can find his Mana Vortex, that's when things get really interesting in that department. But... Of course, he has a Black Vice. Now, he kind of needs a lock to get his Black Vice working. Using my Tome again. Drawing cards here. And because I am on the play, I get to choose how to stack the effect. So I can say I first want to... Um, want to resolve the Black Vice stack and then use my, my Tome to draw the extra card. And Hank is on three life here. And even though he's on three life, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to kind of see this going completely wrong for me here because he has total control. He has two blue mana open and there goes my Zauberbuch. 
That means that I won't be able to dig for any answers. Just having to hope that my top deck is favorable and look at that a mana vortex. Does mean that he's tapped his two blue sources. So maybe I'm keeping something back, I hope so. And remember, because of the mana vortex, he has to sacrifice a land when it comes into play. And there he goes playing a second black vice. And that means when it's my turn, I have to start second lands now. Tapping his Howling Mines, so he's probably going to wait until my land count is low enough. Taking damage there from the Vice, going to 18. And there's another Zauberbuch. So at least that's something. And there's a Concordant Crossroads. But not really relevant. Well, I guess I can use my mana dorks for mana when they come into play. So that's uh, at, at least a use for them. I really need to find a Tranquility. And I really need to be able to cast that Tranquility. Because I think I've got the game if I can manage to do so. So let's hope that's going to happen here. Drawing an extra card here. Drawing three more cards from the Howling Mine. It's just insane. I mean, his, he's drawing four cards a turn now. Playing another Relic Barrier. And of course, he has to sack it to his Mana Vortex. I want to say, why is he dropping his Loa? Um, he gets enough cards in hand anyway. And that Lanowar Elf is removed from the game, so I should have put it in a different pile. But okay. I don't think it's very relevant for this particular game, but still. Tapping the Howling Mines, passing turn here. And I'm using here my Tome, and I'm doing that in my upkeep so I can still use the land that I have to sack to the Mana Vortex for mana. I mean, come on, I should be able to find something here. Playing at Pendlehaven, losing another land, playing another Whirling Dervish. They can be fantastic cards, but right now they're not very useful just because of that one moat. And he's sacking his workshop here to the Mana Vortex, drawing a card. Well, actually, <laughs> drawing three cards, I should say. Tapping everything he has. So it's my go again. It looks like I'm not taking any damage yet from the vices. Despite the fact that I draw an extra card each turn and I lose a land as well each turn. So there will be a moment here in this game where the vices are really going to hurt me. And I won't be able to activate the tome anymore. And remember, I still have less land than Hank. So when I play out a forest right now, it means I have to sec. Uh, I have to sec a land as well. So you can kind of see the land equilibrium mana vortex trick working here and i'm actually sec oh no i was about to draw i wanted to say i'm now actually giving up because uh i cannot uh i, I, I cannot create enough mana for me um in my mana pool to actually play the uh, tranquility and then you could see i actually found the tranquility in the next turn so i, I feel i just was very very unlucky here um, it also shows that maybe I should board in even more Tranquilities when I'm playing against a deck like this. And it shows the importance of playing with a Strip Mine for that Library of Alexandria because I'm not playing with a Strip Mine in this deck for the simple reason that I don't have a white-boarded reprint because I just wanted to play with white-boarded reprints in this deck. Anyway, he was almost dead. I was almost there. He was on three life. So, I mean, I have, I have good hope. I have faith that I will be able to beat them next game and to, and to still take this match home. So let's quickly go to game two and, uh, and see what I can do. Game number two, and uh, at least I'm on the play because I lost, but crazy. 
Crazy. So I guess I need a, a wide bordered strip mine that's on the list now. And I need a little bit more luck, but um, I do believe I can I can win this. I mean, I've got a really quick deck. Look at this again, a perfect opening for me with that forest into a lot of rails. But look at Hank here finding that Mox and that workshop being able to cast an icy manipulator turn one. Tapping two mana here, playing a whirling dervish and using the other mana from the Lunar Elves to play another cre creature. So that means that I can do some damage hopefully next turn. A double Relic Barrier. And I wonder if I'm going to sec. Oh, look at this. He's tapping my Lunar Elf for mana. And I would say, wonder if I'm going to sec the. The scavenger folk here, that's uh, the word I'm looking for. The scavenger folk to take care of the icy manipulator. And look at that, he's giving me counters. Thank you, Hank. I guess I don't have my counters with me here. So my whirling dervish is actually going to grow. It's a 2 2 now. And I'm not activating the scavenger folk yet. I wonder why. Maybe just waiting for my end step. I'm doing it right now. Taking care of the icy manipulator. And that means I can deal three damage now. Hopefully I can find another creature, maybe an Urnum Jin. Because I haven't really seen my bigger creatures here, my four Urnum Jins or my Force of Nature. And they're actually in there to kind of speed things up for me. And Hank is going down to 16 now and my Whirling is a 3-3. Three, three. So I hope he's not going to find a moat because that could be a big problem. And Hank only has three cards in hand, it seems. There we see a Swords to Plowsiers on my Whirling Dervish. That means I'm gaining some life, but that's not really important. Playing land number five, not finding any more creatures to play out. And this is a problem. Because there he goes, he's finding his Howling Mine, and they're very important for his deck. Attacking him again means he's, go he's going to 14, but I really need to speed things up here. He's not going to give me 14 turns. Finding a Pixies. So at least I get to deal some more damage, but this is going too slow. And there again, a Stormseeker dealing five damage here. I must say, I really like the Stormseekers against these type of decks. And look at that. Oh, I wish I would have waited with the Storm. Well, actually, no, because then it would have would have, would have had to put it back in my hand, so that, that doesn't really matter. So me playing out the Storm Seeker was a good decision. But Hank is taking a huge risk here, giving me seven new cards. But I guess he has to. He's kind of with his back against the wall. And we saw in game number one that with the deck that he plays, he can just change things around really quickly, as long as he has enough cards. Playing a Mock Sapphire here. Playing a Felwar Stone. Attacking him now just for two. No, I'm not actually. Interesting. Attacking for two here, so it's going to six. So I guess I need that mana. Playing something big here. Playing an Asp. Playing another one. Playing. Ooh. And you know what? I'm not sure if this is a good decision, if this is the right play, because my opponent plays with white. And white has a card called balance. So I'm not sure if this is a good decision. If he plays a balance now, he's going to wipe my entire board. Playing another relic barrier first, and another one. Emptying his hand, so this could mean he's going to play a balance here. Oh, yeah. oh, man. I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. <clears throat> oh, man. Really. This is stupid. This is painful to look back, actually. I forgot about this. Just walking into that balance, and I should have known, uh, because he has so many cards in hand, drawing extra with the Loa, having that Howling Mine active, 
And I'm counting my mana, so hopefully I can still do something. This is pretty cool here. Playing a force of nature, but my opponent has that chaos orb. So I'm expecting him to kind of use his chaos orb here on the force of nature. Obviously he's going to wait until I've paid for the upkeep and declared my attack, and then he can still activate his chaos orb. Paying two here. Paying four. And there's a moat. Oh, again the moat. So that means he doesn't even need to activate his Chaos Orb. And if he can then find a way to play a Mana Vortex as well after that Mana Equilibrium, he can maybe kill me with my own Force of Nature. Look at that, I have... Oh, this is great. At least I have a Tranquility. Something I couldn't find in game number one. And remember, he's only on six. I'm going to attack now. He's probably going to activate his Chaos Orb. Let's hope that he misses the flip. I'm going to put it on slow-mo here. If he misses this flip, I have won the game. It's as simple as that. So he's pointing towards the Tundra. So the Tundra is going to represent my Italian Forza della Natura. So my 8-8 Force of Nature. Please do not hit it. Okay. Boom. Bam, it's gone. <laughs> it wasn't a perfect flip, but it's good enough. So that means he only gets one damage uh, dealt by my Lanower Elves. And I'm playing another Scavenger Folk. And so far these Scavenger Folks have been really handy. I don't think we played with any sideboards. So he's on five life. If he can find a second mode, I'm in trouble again. Unfortunately, I don't have a deck picture, so I don't know if he plays with one or with two modes. I believe with two. Um, he's tapping his Howling Mine. And paying here. Mm, playing an Armageddon, interesting choice. Obviously, that means I cannot put more threats on the board, and he has his artifact mana, but the Felwer Stone doesn't work anymore. I do have my Lanower Elves. Look at that, it's playing an island. And this is an interesting question. Would you now choose to maybe activate the Scavenger Folk to take care of the Howling Mine? And that's actually what I'm doing. Or would you have used the Scavenger Folk just to keep hitting Hank and trying to kill him? This was a difficult decision. And attacking again, he's going to three here. I believe my hand is empty, by the way. Playing a land equilibrium. It's going to two. That means he probably would have been dead by now. On the other hand, you he would have drawn two more cards, so maybe he would have find, found a solution. There's a time walk. So he's still hanging in there. Black Vice doesn't really matter. Two cards in hand. It's my turn. Can I find a giant growth? Attacking here goes to one. Almost there. Ah, finding an icy means he can tap down my attacker. Ah, come on. He's on one life. Hurricane for one and I'm there. Playing another Felwer Stone. Playing a Mana Vortex. Oh, this is pretty problematic. Well, we kind of see the webcam of Hank getting very blurry. Thank you, Hank. That's better. Getting the focus back there on the game. Oh, no. This is bad news because I'm going to lose my lands and he can tap down my elf. And then I'm stuck. I believe I'm stuck. Because of the land equilibrium, I have to sacrifice it when it comes into play. Oh, this is horrible. And I'm now slowly getting damage. We're actually discussing if I can use it for mana. 
And I don't believe I can, so I need a mox here. There's no mox in this deck. The reason that I can't is that for every land I play, when I have the same amount of lands or less lands in the game, um, then I have to sacrifice a land for every land that I play. So in other words, I cannot play out any land anymore. So <laughs> this is insane. I'm stuck. And uh, congratulations, Hank. You've beat me fair and square. It's 2-0 uh, for you. Uh, I really want to get a rematch um, because, I, just, I mean, come on. This is insane. Anyway, um, great magic. Great to see your prison deck working so well. Uh, it's really nice to see these type of decks and, and getting some more, um, you know, differentiation in the old school scene, in, in the tournament scene as well, where you don't see a lot of these type of decks uh, at the moment. So bring it on, bring it to tournaments, curious to see how it does in a tournament setting. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more games, there are, I believe, some videos appearing right now on your screen. You can click on those or you can, of course, come over to the channel and check it out. And if you want to support this content, if you like my channel, if you like what I do, please subscribe. If, you've, if you're already a member, thank you for that. You can leave a comment, leave a like, all that stuff helps. And also share the games with other people. So... Thank you for all that if you've done that already. For now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks and see you next time.